Hey everyone, Shabimi here and welcome back to another video showcasing who could be the next potential manager of Manchester United. Now this video is all about Massimiliano Allegri, um, former, well, current Juventus manager, should we say. Um, has got pretty interesting stats, actually very, very good in certain positions, especially his coaching attributes are fantastic and his man management and motivation skills are pretty high as well. Tactical knowledge only 13 is a little bit worrying, but it's not the worst we have seen. Now one thing about Allegri, which is different to all the others, so far as it instantly he's brought in a director of football in Stuart Hall. Now, Stuart Hall is not a real person. Uh, the game has generated him as the director of football. I know certain managers do prefer to run with a director of football, and that's exactly what Allegri has done. So without further ado, let's get straight into the end of season one and see how Allegri has got on. So at the end of the season then, we have got Man United finishing third in the league. Only two points away from the top there, which was won by Arsenal, which is quite surprising. And um, yes, third in the league is not amazing compared to some of the other teams we've had so far. Uh, some of the other managers have had so far, should we say. But um, it's still pretty strong, only two points away from the top. We'll have a look in and see how he did transfer-wise in his first season. If I can find the correct button, there we are. Right, so he brought in, obviously Fred we already know about. Uh, Emil Forsberg is a pretty good signing actually, £34 million. Pounds. Uh, played 30 odd games, it's pretty interesting. Uh, Kevin Umbabu. Um, must have been a backup player, I would imagine. He's not exactly fantastic, is he? Uh, Oliver from Porto, young Spanish player. I've had him before. He used to play for, yeah, Atletico Madrid. And he got nine games there. They brought him in. Uh, wow, if you look at it, there was a lot of uh, movement in January, wasn't there? A lot of movement in January. Uh, Kieran Tierney. Uh, extra left back again in January. So 13 games in two, Babin. You can see he came in in January. Cesar Montes, young Mexican centre back. I've not really heard of him before, to be honest with you. And, well, this is actually season two, but right at the end of the first season, £104 million spent on Paolo Dybala. Yet to make his debut, we'll see that in season two. Let's have a look and see how they got on in the other aspects. Right, let's not go through all of this. It's a bit pointless, isn't it? Let's go towards the bottom. So they got knocked out of the Champions League in the quarterfinals to Atletico Madrid. Um, knocked out of... No, they won the EFL Cup. They beat Arsenal in the EFL Cup final. There we go. They won the championship already. Uh, knocked out of the FA Cup 2-1 by Liverpool. So it's an interesting season. Third in the league, won the League Cup. I tell you what, that's not actually terrible. I think if he did take on the job next season and that's the result he got, I think I'd be happy with that, to be honest, as a first season. Two points away from the Championship and winning the League Cup. Quarterfinals of the Champions League, fifth round of the FA Cup. It's not the best season in the world, but it's definitely not the worst. But let's see if we can build on that as we go into the end of season number two. Here we go, the end of season number two, and he is one point closer. Only losing the league by one point this time. Arsenal still winning it two years in a row for Arsenal. That's pretty insane, actually. Really insane. Okay, so uh, yeah, only one point away, which is pretty impressive. Let's have a look at the transfers then, if we go down to the history. Right, so of course, as we saw at the end of the last season, uh, Dybala came in. Uh, how well did he do then? 12 goals in 35 games, that's pretty good. Uh, well, actually, it's not very good, is it really? Uh, Matthias De Ligt, great, excellent, excellent signing. Really going to strengthen their centre-back position. Scored three goals as well. Uh, Marco Verratti, wow. They really threw the money at uh, Allegri this season. Uh, Lucas Romero. I know Lucas Romero. I think I brought him before previously, young Argentinian. And Patrick Schick, the uh, Czech Republic striker. So they must have sold a big amount of money. They sold Lingard to Arsenal. That's it, really. So they gave him a lot of money to spend. Dybala, 104 million. That came out of last, mo uh, last year's transfer budget, though, I think. Then the 75 million on Verratti, 23 on Delict 41 on Schick, wow. That's an interesting, interesting sum of that is actually. A lot of money spent and it did get them one point closer to the league, but how did it do them in the other competitions? If we have a look, so they won the FA Cup, beat in Blackburn. Um, they were knocked out of the Champions League first knockout stage to Napoli, losing 3-1 aggregates. And in the EFL Cup, they lost to Newcastle. So, it wasn't it wasn't terrible. Again, one point away from winning the Premiership. And won the FA Cup. So, he's won the EFL Cup and the FA Cup in two seasons. Become very, very close to the 
the Premiership in two seasons as well. Um, not done fantastically well in the Champions League so far. But let's go to the end of season number three and see how he moves on. And once again for the third season in a row, so, so close. Only two points behind the winners who were this time Liverpool. It's just, I can't believe how close they've been. Two points, one point, and then two point away from winning the Premiership again. It's crazy, isn't it, really? All right, let's have a look at the transfers then. They brought in Dominin, Dominic Prokop from Austria Vuen. I don't really know that name, to be honest with you, but he got seven games this season. Is he good enough? Your guess is as good as mine. Alexis Silmekias. Yep, maybe. A uh, youngster from Belgium. Played 22 games. Played 37 million for him. Jakob Jankto. Another young Czech Republic player. Looks interesting. Pretty good stats. 23 games, 4 goals. Julian Brandt. Okay, that's a big signing. I think he's a very good player. He was on FIFA anyway. Um, 13 games, 2 goals. Was he in January? No, he was in August. And he played 13 games for £50 million. That's actually not a great signing, is it really? Then Sebastiani, Sebastiano Luperto. I'm really struggling with my pronunciations today. Played 19 games as centre-back. I don't think his stats are that good either, really. And then another player they brought in right at the end of the season for next year. Kingsley Coman. Wow. Another big deal. A lot of money in that one. A lot of money. £88 million. Pounds. Wow. Let's head over to the schedule then. See what else happened. They lost in the Champions League final to Arsenal. Gutted. After knocking out Real Madrid. 4-3 for for free, free on aggregate with away goals. Uh, lost it. Yeah, they lost the Champions League final to Arsenal. They got knocked out of the FA Cup semi-finals to Arsenal. And in the EFL Cup, they were eliminated by Liverpool. Again, it seems to be with Allegri that he's just always the bridesmaid, never the bride. He seems very much like um, the way that uh, Klopp is at Liverpool. I'm going to regret saying that at some point. Um, where they just seem to always get to finals and always do pretty well, but they never seem to... Be able to take up the Don't get me wrong, he's won the FA Cup and the EFL Cup, which is pretty good. But to be so close to win the league every season, to be so close to win the Champions League this season, just always seems to be one step away from where they need to be. Anyway, then, let's get into the end of season number four and see how Allegri's getting on now. Well, will you look at that? That is insane! Well, let's just say that Allegri was not given the opportunity. Because Pep Guardiola walked in as the new manager. When did Pep start as the manager? Did he have all of this season? Uh, milestones that the rest want to go for? He was hired as Man United manager in 2022. So when was that? He was hired on the 18th of the 6th. No, he's just literally been hired. Okay. So he's just been hired today, by the looks of it. 18th of the 6th. 18th of June. Is that correct? That seems very odd that I managed to get it exactly on the day. I didn't do that on purpose. Milestones. So he left. Yeah, 18 for the 6th, 2022. Okay, so he's literally been signed as Man United manager just now. So Guardiola from season 4 onwards is going on. But how did Allegri fare in his final season? Well, he won the league. By five clear points, Manchester United won the league. Absolutely fantastic. Transfer-wise, as we know, Kingsley Coman was coming in. Um, how well did Kingsley Coman do? 11 goals and 32 games from out wide. It's not bad. Christian Pavon from uh, PSG Eindhoven. Obviously a really good player. Young Argentinian attacking midfielder. I can never pronounce this guy's name. Ndombele. I think someone we're linked to in real life actually. Got 26 games. Sergio Ramos from uh, Real Madrid. I mean he's got fantastic stats. He is 36 years old but free transfer you can't say no can you really and Andrea Pinamonte the striker three goals in 10 games signed for 61 million pounds in January a lot of massive sales so Anthony Martial went to PSG for 119 million and Matthias Delete went to Chelsea for 107 million wow two humongous deals and Marcus Rashford went to Chelsea for 8 million pounds Wow, no wonder they sacked Allegri after them sort of transfers. He's decimated the squad. That is shocking. Wow, I cannot believe that. Right. What else then? So we saw him come... Right, knocked out of the Champions League quarterfinals against Manchester City. Um, lost to the FA Cup 
fifth round to Liverpool and EFL Cup quarter final, EFL Cup semi finals, EFL Cup final. Okay, they beat Arsenal, so they won the EFL Cup final and they won the league this year. So it's pretty impressive. Why did Allegri leave them? Was he going for another job? I didn't type in two L's there, did I? Was he going for another job? Let's have a quick look. He's the Spurs manager. Okay. Is that on his own... His own choice, or... Ah, I can't remember how to actually press the button. Career stats, is that the right one? Nope. I'm sure it's milestones. Uh, landmarks... Overall, left as so he wasn't sacked, he left under his own choice to join Spurs on the 4th of the 6th. Okay, so there we go. Allegri decided to leave Man United after winning the Premiership and the League Cup. He won the League Cup twice, the FA Cup, and the Premiership. He decided to leave and go to Spurs, which is a really weird move in my book, but there you go. Either way, he wasn't a he was quite a successful manager, I suppose, if you look at it that way. I mean, as a Man United. As a Man United fan, if you would have told me that we would come very, very close to win the league uh, three years in a row, then win the league, win the FA Cup, losing the Champions League final is pretty heartbreaking, but still it's better than not getting to the Champions League final, win the EFL Cup twice. It's not a terrible four years. Don't get me wrong, it's not the best four years we could have picked, but it's not a terrible scenario at all. So I'd be quite happy with that as a Man United, uh, Man United fan. But then again, I think, as we've seen already with some of the other run-throughs, there are better choices out there. Anyway, we're going to call that it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Of course, if you have, then please do hit a like or subscribe if you want to see some more. I do apologize if I sounded a bit weird, but I've got a bit of a cold going at the moment, so I'm trying my hardest to keep the videos coming. Um, but yeah, oh my god, I just realized that Allegri took Mike Feeling with him as the uh, as a coach to uh, to Spurs. Wow. Okay. Anyway, I've been Shabby Gamer. Thank you much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.